I'll get started here since, you know, it is 11 o'clock. We'll, we'll get started on the ball. Okay. Um, so oh, somebody's signing on. Um, but what makes up a HUD home is a, it is a foreclosed FHA loan. That's what makes it a HUD home. It has nothing to do with a Section 8 voucher or HUD, anything like that. They're just disclosing that HUD slash FHA owns the home. Um, HUD is FHA, same, same, same people. So that's why whenever you see a HUD home, that's what, that's what they're disclosing, that the government owns the home. Um, the big thing about a HUD home is who can buy it. Um, share my screen here. So whenever you see a property that is owned by HUD or listed in bright and it says HUD home, always come to the HUDHomestore.com. Can you share my screen? Can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. Um, so HUD homes, this site, HUDHome.com, will show you every HUD home in the entire country. Now your clients can come to this site also. You can send them here and you don't have to worry about them um, buying a home through here because they need an agent to make the bid for them. Um, so never be afraid to send somebody here just to save you some time. Um, so right now with everything being closed, pickings are very slim. Um, you can pull up, actually there's not a plant. You can pull up the properties either by county, by city, or you can do the whole state. Um, so this home here is available in Atlanta County. Um, right at the top here, case number, this is how HUD identifies the property. So whenever you call HUD, if there's a problem, always have that to identify. Eligible bidders, it'll say all bidders. So that means investors can buy that home. Properties that are only owner occupant will say owner occupant right up there. <clears throat> what makes the difference between an owner occupant and an investor is an owner occupant will have to live in the property for one year as their primary residence before they sell the home or rent the home. Now, a question I get all the time is, is HUD really going to check? No, more than likely HUD's not going to check, but the investors that didn't get a chance to bid on the property we'll call HUD and let them know that you're flipping the house. So um, it, it's one of those where HUD won't always check up on you, but somebody else will rat you out. Um, so if you have a client that is saying he's an owner occupant, but you're thinking he's an investor, always cover your butt, send him an email, send them an email, send them a text and screenshot it and save it in your file, disclosing, covering your butt that you, advised him that he can't buy it as an owner occupant and stipulations. Um, that way you cover, you cover all your bases. Um, we'll go up in your, your neck of the woods there, Larry, and see what we got up. Jeez. Okay, so this is an owner-occupant home. So up at the top here, it has a bid deadline countdown. They'll say they're gonna open bids in two days and 13 hours and 53 minutes. Um, before that, owner-occupants are the only ones that can bid on the house. Investors have to wait. Um, on here, they have bedrooms, baths, square footage, year built, um, lot size, period deadline. So they just tell you that they're opening on September 15th at midnight, list price, and then the type of um, financing, FHA financing. So there's three types of FHA financing on homes. There's insured, which means the property should pass an FHA as is appraisal. There's insured with escrow, meaning it has around $5,000 to $10,000 worth of damage that needs fixed before it can pass an FHA appraisal. And then they have uninsurable, which means the property needs a good bit of work. So always check this and identify that before going out to show the house. Because if you have an owner that, or a buyer that is looking that doesn't want to do too much work to the house, you know, that's a good way to weed, weed out and not show them something that needs work. Um, these tabs under addendums, 
you'll have what they call a PCR, a property condition report. If you click that, it will open up and it will disclose and show you what popped up on the FHA as is appraisal. As soon as my computer catches up. Um, that way you know what you're getting into before you get out to the property. You'll say, hey, you know, this property needs this, this, and this, and this. Are you still interested in going to see the house? Um, that's the big thing. With foreclosures, always let your clients know what they're getting ready to walk into. So when they can't get there, they can't be like, oh, my God. So this one is missing a hot water, missing water heater downspout. Plumbing does not hold pressure. Water heater damaged. Warped floor on second floor, defective paint, um, damaged drywall, damaged bath vanity, possible roof leak. Um, so you know that this house needs some TLC. So if you have somebody that's going VA or FHA, you know it's not the best, best home to walk into. <clears throat> so also down here is they're following up on the inspection. So that's an easy way to weed out some properties before you get out to them. Um, the easiest thing to do is bid on these homes. So say we want to make an offer on this home. So we're going to be a HUD registered bidder. And before you, before you do that, if anybody is not registered on the HUD home store, go up and register. You're going to register as the bidder, not as public. You're going to register as bidder. Um, it's one of those Murphy's laws. If you register now, there's not going to be a problem. If you wait until nine o'clock when bids are due by midnight, there's going to be a problem. So register now. Um, you get your login, your password, and that makes life easy and you're not under pressure. Um, so HUD register bidder. We're going to submit an offer. So no matter what, they're going to keep this property on the property property on the market for another two days and 13 hours, no matter what. Even if we put in a million dollar offer, they're not going to take it. They're not even going to look at it until this time period is up. Um, we are going to be a selling broker. Nade number is specific to your office. Um, everybody at KW Atlantic Shore is ATL NTI 0376. And then you input your license number. And then you got to make sure you're not a robot. Hopefully nobody's a robot. And then you have 15 minutes once you get to this screen to submit your offer. So before you get to the screen, make sure that you have all of your buyer's information. Um, for round numbers, let's say we're going to offer $100,000. Um, line number four, you're going to click off 203B financing, which is FHA, 203B repair escrow, which is insured escrow, 203K, which is the you know construction loan, rehab loan, um, applying for conventional or other financing not involving HUD or FHA, or paying cash. Now, hard money loans are very popular right now. If your people are hard money loan, make sure you click they're applying for conventional or other financing not involving HUD. A lot of them will try to tell you that it's a cash deal, but it's not a cash deal. It's contingent upon an appraisal. It's contingent upon things. So you got to just tell them, listen, we're going to put this here. It, HUD does not give any weight to cash versus financing. If there's a deal $1 higher financing than cash, they're going to take the financing deal. So they do not give any more credit, any more weight to cash opposed to financing. Um, line number five, HUD will pay closing costs up to 3%. Now, if your buyer does need help as far as closing costs goes, line number seven is what HUD reviews. So if it's a very popular property, line number seven is what they review. So if you need 3% for your people, your net to HUD goes down. So in that situation, if you get into a property and we all know which proper properties are going to be popular, you reach out to the listing agent and say, what sort of activity have you had on the home? 
They can't tell you because we don't know how many offers have come in on the home, but they can tell you how many times the home's been shown. So if they're telling you that the home has been shown 20 times in a week or 25 times in a week, you know more than likely that it's going to go over asking price. So with that, if your people do need the closing costs, build it back into the cost of the house. That way you stay out of, you know, going down $3,000 off that price. Um, also, HUD will not come back to anybody with a highest and best. If there's multiple offers at the same price, they have a computer program where they hit a number and it spits a winner out. So if you can make your bid a little bit interesting, a lot of people have been adding a dollar to the price, but I've seen a lot of people do it. So what I've been doing is I've been adding $101 to the price of the home, just to keep yourself out of that multiple offers at the same price. Um, so line number eight is who it's going to be buying it. It's going to be owner occupant, owner occupant, investor, nonprofit, or <laughs> agency. Um, this one is in the owner occupant period. And you can see that you can't change it to anything but owner occupant. Number 10 may or may not hold it as a backup offer. I always click may you're not bound to proceed if they do roll into your offer. Meaning if they accept a higher bid and the person in front of you doesn't get their stuff in on time, they can roll right into your contract, into your offer without going back on the market. If your people have moved on, you just send an email back and say, my people have moved on. They don't chase after you. So I always click it just, just because. Um, purchaser information, if they work for HUD, selling broker. Um, if people are in my office, we cannot purchase these homes ourselves. Um, they deem us having too much inside information. I don't necessarily agree with it, but that's, that's their rules. Um, Larry, you're allowed to buy these. If you do buy these, you don't get paid commission though. So primary purchaser, then you see in red, at least one purchaser must be living on, in the property and those not living in the property would be required to sign owner addendum. Um, so one of these people have to be living in here. You see this block box right here, not living in the property. So, you know, last week we just had somebody where they're buying it for their mom. So, He's clicked not living in the property, click add another prop purchaser, and then mom goes here. Um, you need their social security number, first name, last name, address, zip code, email, and phone number. Make sure that your spelling and everything is correct on here because this is how the contract is generated. HUD generates the contract right off of here. So if you have a spelling mistake, or if you're using a middle name and they don't use a middle name, um, or the email address is wrong, it's, it's a mess. So just make sure everything's correct. Um, if it is going to be an LLC buying the home, you would click business and instead of social, you would put their EIN number and company name and then whoever is the signer for the property, for the LLC, that's who would go there. Um, buyer select closing agent. Now the way they phrase that, it's a little confusing. It's your title company. You're allowed to choose any title company as long as they're approved by HUD. Um, I haven't run into one that HUD is not HUD approved. Um, so most of them, you know, as far as us, they're already in here. Information populates. Um, so they're, you know, they're, they're all pretty much in here. Um, then down at the bottom, e-signature signer for brokerage. Um, for us at KW, Rosalie is populated in there because she's our broker. Um, I've never had an issue with her waiting to sign things. I just send her a text and say, a contract's coming to you. Can you please, you know, docu-sign it? And, um, never had a problem with waiting for her to send stuff back. Um, you can get rid of the broker and put yourself. If you do do that, you need to go to blbresources.com and pull a broker authorization form. 
and Rosalie or your broker needs to sign the broker authorization form, giving you permission to sign for her. So I always figure if they're signing something, might as well just sign the contract. Um, and that's it. So when you're submitting the offers, you do not need a contract. You do not need proof of funds. You do not need a pre-qual letter. You do not need anything to submit the contract. If they accept your offer within 48 hours, you will need proof of funds or a pre-qual letter. You will also need a check, what they call an earnest money deposit. Um, earnest money deposit varies on the amount on what the price of the home is. So if it's under $50,000, it's 500. If it's $51,000 to 250,000, it's 1,000. And if it's over 250, it is a $2,500 earnest money deposit. That earnest money deposit is held by the listing agent until the contract is ratified and then it is dropped off at the title company title company now once it's dropped off at the title company that is escrow money it doesn't get released unless there's a home inspection on the property by an owner occupant and something turns up that wasn't disclosed in the property condition report if something pops up there they get their thousand dollars back or whatever it is 500 or 25 they get their emd back if it is an investor they do not get their money back no matter what hud deems investors as professionals and they should know what they're bidding on before they bid on it so if you have a an investor make sure that they know that once the thousand dollars goes in they're not getting it back no matter if anything turns up or they can't get financing um so that's the one thing that we run into there is some things on i think it's truly on those q a things where um somebody asked that question they're like and they said well they get 50 percent back if they don't qualify for the loan and that's not that's not true um it it's it's all gone tom can i ask a question yeah uh does the same go for if they can't get clear title clear title they will let you HUD will keep extending it until they clear the title. If they don't see themselves, like I just had one with a repairing claim for like $89,000 that they're giving back to the mortgage company, they gave the money back there. Now you ask a good question because just this month, we had a couple properties pop up with solar panels. HUD used to give clear title without the UCC loan or lien. They don't anymore. There's still gonna be a UCC lien on these properties going forward. So if you're showing a HUD home that has solar panels, um, reach out to a title company, see what the lien is, see how much it is, because um, HUD's no longer getting rid of them. Thanks. So very, very easy to submit offers. Um, once this is submitted, if it's accepted, you'll have your 48 hours to upload your proof of funds or pre-qual letter. Once that's done, HUD will generate the contract for you and it will be sent to you for approval. Once it's sent to you, you say, yes, it works. It's fine. No changes. Then it goes to your broker. They sign off. Then it goes to your client. They sign off. Then it goes to the title company. They sign off. And then it goes to HUD for them to sign off. Um, the title company does have to sign the contract. Um, that way they should never say, you know, they don't know what's going on. If you ever have a title company that says they don't know what's going on, tell them to read. Because when HUD, HUD sends this contract out, they send, I believe it's like a 35 or 40 page PowerPoint presentation that an eight year old could close this file. Um, it's literally broken down on saying, report this, click next page, do this, next page. So if you ever have a title company that says they don't know what to do, they're not, they're not paying attention. And that's why they have to buy, sign the contract. Um, hopefully get them more involved. Um, for any settlement, HUD requires, and it is in the PowerPoint presentation to the title company, but it's good to know ahead of time, HUD requires five days notice before settlement. So if you want to schedule settlement on the 20th, by the 15th, um, your title company better have requested a, a settlement date. So. 
We got that. Everything's done. So they accepted our offer. What's next? When they accept your offer, they will send you an email and on there it will have um, utility activation form. Um, if you don't get it, you can come to this site, blbresources.com. This is the asset manager for HUD. And all the way down here, you'll have FSM forms. It stands for field, Sor for field Service Manager Forms, Utility Activation Request. So you fill this out with the case number, all this good stuff. They do make you pay a deposit, a $150 deposit now to have a little bit of skin in the game because, you know, we had agents that, you know, it was disclosed that the pipes didn't hold pressure and some pipes were missing and they would still turn the water on and flood the houses. Um, so they actually make you put a little bit of money down to make sure you, you're uh, kind of invested and in not destroying the place. So of the $150, if you don't damage the place, you do get a refund on that. You can turn the utilities on for a maximum of 72 hours. You can turn them on as many times as you want. If it's a financing deal, you probably have to have them turned on for the home inspection, if you have to have them turned on for the appraisal, um, or because they just wanna do something else. You can have them turned on as much as they want. Um, if the property does not, if it's listed as the pipes don't hold pressure, they're not gonna give you permission to turn the water on. So with that is if they don't have water, if the gas is already off, they probably won't let you turn the gas on. So you need to go know ahead of time that these utilities probably won't be able to be turned on for inspections. So you need to build that expectation with your buyer. If something happens to the home while it's under contract, you'll get an email saying change of condition with a picture of what happened and what changed. Um, and your, your buyer can you know, agree to go forward or go or, or to back out. Um, with the home inspections, the houses are strictly as is. They do give you a credit if it's an owner occupant to remediate lead-based paint. They won't do it for you, but they'll give you up to a $4,000 credit to remediate lead-based paint. That's it. Um, you know, it's, as agents, you know, we know we don't get paid unless the house gets to settlement. We're dealing with HUD where they're getting their weekly paycheck no matter what, no matter if the house sells or not. So if you draw a line in the sand and say, I'm not settling unless you guys give me a $300 credit for a hot water heater. The lady in Iowa making her same amount of money, she doesn't care. She doesn't care if you don't settle. Um, so she's going to tell you to cancel the contract and rebid at a lower price. So that sounds well and good, but you do not know how many backup offers they have behind you. So if you cancel the contract, they're going to roll into whatever offers right behind you. Um, so you always have to make sure that your people are okay. Um, are okay losing the house if they're gonna draw that line in the sand. Um, this site also, blbresources.com, has basically every kind of addendum you could use. Um, cancellation request, um, closing date extension request, um, all that kind of stuff. They have samples of contracts. Um, basically everything you could you could need is is on this site. Um, and they even have videos showing about what's going on. Um, do we run into any more questions? I can just talk and talk and talk and talk. So newer agents. The advantage of a HUD home to newer agents or agents looking for buyers is you can advertise any HUD home in any state you're licensed in as your own. You do not have to say, you know, brought to you by Keller Williams Atlantic Shore. You can advertise just your listing. 
just the listing. And the cool thing about it is they even make you flyers. So you go pull up that little icon there and come down to wherever you want to advertise, be it Atlantic and Cape May County, Cumberland and Salem, wherever you want to go. We'll pull up this because they actually have more, more than one. Um, but they make you a flyer. And you see it's not branded with any agent information whatsoever. It is literally just the asset manager and your little equal housing opportunity home. And that's it. You can take this, download it, put it on your Facebook, put it on your website, um, print it out, hand it out, advertise, you know, free list of foreclosures in the area. Um, basically anything, anything you want to do, um, you can you can throw it out there. You can run Facebook ads off HUD homes. Um, and, you know, honestly, in this market, if you can put the word foreclosure out there, you're going to get more leads than you probably want to deal with um, because everybody's going to see foreclosure and perceive that they're getting a great deal. Um, so you're going to get as many buyers as you could, you could probably handle. Um, agents within our office, guys, um, if you run a command ad on these properties, you're going to get a lot of tra a lot of traffic. Um, can everybody still see my screen? So I ran one ad on command through campaigns on um, on a home that I thought was a little bit overpriced. So when I ran this ad, I ran it on the, the house in Hamilton. I was going to spend $30. I clicked in $30 to spend. It ran for two days. I got a total of 28 leads and I spent 48 cents a lead. Um, now when those leads come through, those leads have their name, have their phone number, have their email address. They necessarily aren't gonna be purchasing this house but anywhere you can go and spend 48 cents per lead, you know, that's, that's a win-win. You know, you can't, can't really beat that. So any of these HUD homes, you can run these campaigns on and you can get a lot of leads. Um, you know, I'll show you what they come through as. My computer's slow because I'm on every screen. Um, yeah. While that loads, we'll go back here. Um, when the world is normal and everything is open, there's usually a page or two in Atlanta County as far as properties go. Um, Cumberland County usually has three to four pages of HUD homes. Um, right now, there's just Nothing out there. Yeah. So there's really just not much out there. Um, questions, questions, questions. Larry, did I cover everything? Uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, I've learned a lot just in this very short period of time. Uh, a lot of stuff I did not know. Really good. Really good stuff. Uh, are you going to post? I see you're recording this. Are you going to post this anywhere? So we're we going to. Um, it usually goes on our Facebook page. Um, we'll, I'll, um, if you drop your email address in the chat, we'll email you. Okay. Um, but sometimes it. I say stuff that doesn't agree with HUD. <laughs> so <laughs> putting it public isn't the best thing all the time. Um, but we'll we'll send you a copy. Okay. Thanks. Um, so, I mean, that, that pretty much covers it. Um, you know, the main thing is, you know, if you want, advertise them, you know, get buyers, use them. You don't have to give credit to the listing agent. 
you know, take the property and run with it. Um, a weird thing that's been working for me is Craigslist. Um, you know, I posted that this one on Craigslist, um, the one on Whitehorse Pike, um, this thing, and I, I probably have gotten six or seven leads off of it. So as much as all the other agents have kind of moved away from Craigslist, that opens it up to the people are still sticking with it. So there's not much competition out there on Craigslist right now. Um, I'm not finding my chat. <laughs> You're what? I'm not finding the chat area where I can put that information in. Let's see if it pops up. Huh. Okay, we I just got it. Okay. All right. Well that that um that should cover it. That should cover everything, guys. Well, thanks. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Um I'm gonna throw my um <clears throat> my stuff in here if you guys ever have questions you know reach out and give me um give me a ring um you know it's not it's not hard it's one of those things where if the minute you think that the hud stuff's hard is when you're just not following directions um and seasoned agents it's it's hard because it doesn't necessarily always make sense <laughs> so you know, there's a quicker way and a faster way to get things done, but you could just have to sit there and remember you're dealing with the federal government. So, um, you know, as much as we could streamline the process and make it easier and make it less complicated, you're dealing with the government. So um, just, just always remember that. I've actually steered clear of them as much as possible because I was afraid it was too complicated, you know? It's, it's easy. Um, I mean, Michelle, you just signed on. Michelle sold a, sold and probably going to settle on a HUD home within probably, what do you think, Michelle, three weeks, three and a half weeks? Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. Just waiting for all the um, title to clear and whatnot, and we should get going. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's, not, it's not difficult. You know, back before the um, technology revolution, it was difficult. I mean, you literally had to have contracts done yourself find the buyer wherever they were, have them sign off, and then overnight them to Michigan within the 48 hour time period. Now that sucked. That was, that was, you literally got your running shoes on and had to run from place to place to place because between the title company signing it, your buyer signing it, you're getting the check and then you finding FedEx to overnight it to Michigan. That was a process. So they've, they've gotten a lot better. I'm just a little confused about the utilities that you, that you can and cannot get turned on. Like if you said if the gas is off, chances are you can't get it turned on or for inspection. If you, if all the pipes are there um, and everything's not damaged, you can get all the utilities turned on without a problem. Um, the gas company does stink to deal with because um, sometimes you'll actually have somebody that says the owner of HUD needs to call to activate the gas. And by the time you're done explaining to them that, you know, who the owner of HUD is, um, you know, it's kind of a pain. Um, I try to streamline it and just get one person's name that I can call at South Jersey Gas to, to expedite this. And the, obviously the supervisor's response was, no, she can't give away just one person's number. And I said, well, how do we deal with this? And she says, you just hang up and call back. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I guess they think we have a lot of time to just keep hanging up on people and calling back. Um, right. Guys, us, um, the Pleasantville gas place, if you walk in there with a contract and the utility activation form, it takes two minutes. Nice as can be. Um, so if all the utilities are there working or, you know, the wires are there, the pipes are there, everything's there, you can get everything turned on. Um, you know, if the water can't be turned on because the pipes are missing, you know how the gas company wants all utilities on before they turn the gas on? That's where you run into the problem. Uh, 
but besides that they should they should have them activated for you um you know if it's a well sometimes you have to get a plumber out there to prime the pump prime the well pump if it's been off for a while um so some of it's a little bit of a process getting the utilities on um but it kind of evens out with your time invested very good thanks all right thank you guys